In this video, I'm going to be going over some of my most anticipated football boot releases of 2024. So these are model lines that I think should be updated by the end of this year. And if you are interested in any of my current football boot recommendations, I'll leave links in the description where you can find them for sale online. Now let's jump straight into things, starting with the Nike Premier 3. Now this is honestly one of my favorite boots that Nike sells, and at this point, the Premier 3 has been out for several years. Now that being said, Nike doesn't tend to update the Nike Premier line as often as their other models, but there are some major changes that are currently happening with the Premier series, that being that Nike is making the transition away from leather to full synthetic materials. So that's gonna be a very different design element for this football boot because when it was released about three years ago, it was a full kangaroo leather upper football boot. So in my opinion, Nike's best option would be to actually just keep this Nike Premier 3 silo as full kangaroo leather and then introduce a Nike Premier 4 that will be clearly labeled as full synthetic because I think a lot of people may want a leather football boot and so you should leave the Premier 3 open for those people and for those who are interested in getting a synthetic Nike, Nike Premier, they should just have that fourth tier option. Um, but that being said, even though I am a fan of leather football boots, I still think this will be a great boot once it transitions to synthetic. The Nike Premier just has such a classic design. I love this gold colorway. I, I have them in a all platinum colorway. And I think that even if they make the update to the synthetic, um, synthetic material, it's still gonna be a great football boot. It's super comfortable, has a nice retro aesthetic. And I think it's, one of Nike's most popular boots, especially for those who are looking for a model around the $100 price point. And that's another thing I'm hoping, uh, and that's the price doesn't get raised. Uh, a few years ago, you could pick up a pair of the Premieres for around 99 bucks, and the price has gone up since then. So hopefully we don't see another increase past that $120 level, but it's a great football boot, and I'm definitely excited to see what they bring with the Nike Premier 4. And then moving on, we have another model from Nike with the Vapor 15, soon to be the Vapor 16. Now this is a football boot I'm actually very confident will be released later this year. And that's because usually Nike, Nike's core models in being um, the Mercurial, the Tiempo, and the um, Phantom, they usually get updated within two, a two year period, usually even sooner than that. And at this point, the Vapor 15 has been out for a little over a year. It's been a very popular football boot. And I think Nike is looking to update this line because at this point, the Vapor 15 is older than the Tiempo Legend 10 and older than the Phantom GX2. Um, so they're gonna be looking to create a new model and compete with some of the other high-end speed boots because Adidas will likely be making a, another release this year as well. Um, I have heard reports that the new Vapor 16 is going to have a more throwback retro design similar to Predators that we've seen um, maybe five to ten years ago. You can already see there's some slight design changes between the older colorways that came out last year and the new Dream Speed colorway you see here. You get a slightly different Nike swoosh on the Dream Speed colorway, so I don't know if this could be a hint as to what we might get with the new variation. But it's a great football boot. I was really impressed with the Vapor 15, not just the Elite model, but also uh, the takedown variations. I thought the Vapor 15 Academy was a great football boot. Um, so I'm excited to see where they take it with uh, the Vapor 16. I definitely think it'll be cool if they do a little bit of a throwback. Um, and they've got great colorways for this boot too. Um, I remember I got mine in this white and red. So hopefully they've got some cool colorways. Um, I think it might be a smaller refresh in terms of actual feature a feature set. I think you're still gonna get this elasticated knit material running through the midfoot. I think we're gonna have a similar shape to the toe box. In my opinion, it's kind of a, if it's, if it's not broken, don't fix it situation because the Vapor 15 is already a great boot. So I don't think they're gonna make too many changes because it's such a popular line already. Um, next up, we have a boot that I think should make some changes, and that's gonna be the Puma Ultra Ultimate. So I actually used to be a bigger fan of the Puma Ultra back when they were making the Ultra 1.3 and the Ultra 1.4 about three years ago uh, or so. 
And since then, when they released the Ultra Ultimate, I kind of thought it was a little bit bland in terms of the design itself. I think the Ultra 1.4 looked a lot cooler. Um, the upper was also thinner on the 1.4, which I think is the main appeal of this football boot. So I think they need to do something a little bit more adventurous if Puma wants to keep pace and stay competitive with offers from Nike, from Adidas, and from New Balance. Um, I still think there's a lot of hope for, uh, for Puma. The Future is one of my favorite football boots. They just released the Future 7, which is also a great uh, one-piece upper knit football boot. But I think the Ultra could really use an update because this is technically Puma's flagship football boot. Uh, I think this is likely the one that they sell the most pairs of. Uh, and so I think it deserves to be a slightly, slightly better model. Um, just more intriguing design, a little bit less basic. Um, maybe bring back the Puma Cat itself on the side. I thought that looked sick. Uh, and just some cooler colorways and a slightly wider fit. I found these boots to be so narrow throughout the toe box. Definitely more narrow compared to the Vapor 15 and the X Crazy Fast from Adidas. Um, so in a more anatomical fit, slightly wider toe box, and I think Puma could be a lot more competitive with uh, the Ultra Series. And then next up, we have a, another football boot that I think could be improved from Puma, and that's gonna be the King Series. I like this animation that they got with this guy dribbling the ball. Um, so Puma, similar to Nike, they went full synthetic with their King line, just like Nike did with the Tiempo Series. But unlike Nike, I don't think Puma was as successful with implementing uh, that new synthetic design. I thought the Tiempo Legend 10 was a very comfortable football boot when it was released last year, but the Puma King Ultimate fell a little bit flat to me, in my opinion. Um, it's actually, I think, a, it's a little bit better than previous leather Puma Kings that were a big disappointment, but I just think that this boot could be so much better. It's similar to uh, um, the Puma Ultra Ultimate. It's a little bit too narrow in the toe box. And from a boot like the Puma King, you expect its best feature to be comfort. So you want it to be really comfortable throughout the midfoot, the heel area, the toe box. You want them to kind of stretch out to your feet over time. I just feel like the Puma King doesn't have those aspects that would make this a really competitive football boot. It needs to be good enough to compete with leather boots at a similar price range, even though it's synthetic. And right now, I think the Puma King Ultimate, it can't even compete with more affordable options, in my opinion, like the Nike Premier 3 or the Copa Gloro from Adidas, um, or even the Tiempo Legend 10 Pro, which is the, the first takedown boot from Nike. Um, so I think this line definitely has potential. I want to see the Puma King series get back on track because this is a really, really famous football boot. This is the boot that Pele used to wear. Um, I think it has a lot of potential. So I think Puma will likely be making an update sooner rather than later to get this model kind of um, back towards where it should be in their lineup. All right, and next up, we have one of my favorite boots, um, that was released in recent years, and that's gonna be the New Balance 442 V2 Pro. I actually have uh, this exact model in the same colorway right here. I wore these boots to death last year. I think I was wearing them almost every session for about six months or so. And these boots are so, so comfortable. Um, they've got a full kangaroo leather toe box, got a transition to synthetic in the midfoot, but the most impressive thing about these boots is just the width. They're so accommodating throughout the toe box. I even opted to get the wide variation with the 442s. And they've been around for over two years now, the 442 V2 Pro. So this is the second iteration of the 442 series. And New Balance did make improvements from the original 442 to the V2 Pro. So They've already improved this model line once, so I'm confident that they're going to be able to do that again. And New Balance has just been killing it recently. If you look at the Tequila V4 Pro and the Furon V7 Pro, those boots um, have also recently been updated. They're some of the best high-end boots you can get on the market, which is impressive considering they're about $50 to $60 less than other offerings from Nike and Adidas. 
And the 442 shouldn't be slept on either. It's a super comfortable leather football boot, easily one of the most comfortable boots I tried on last year. And I think it does have some room for improvement with uh, the third generation that will hopefully come out within the next year. I think the design could be maybe a little bit more adventurous. I think New Balance went pretty conservative with the design they had here. Not that that's a bad thing. And I'm also hoping that we can get maybe some more colorways with the 442 as well. Uh, for its initial release, you could pretty much only get this in white and black. Uh, since then, I think they also have launched it in gold. And then if you look hard enough, you can find red and blue colorways as well. But I would definitely like to see a slightly more um, varied design and some new colorways. But I'm really excited for New Balance to release uh, what I think will be called the 442 V3. Um, naming, has, naming boots has never really been New Balance's strong suit. Um, but it's a great boot, so I'm really excited for the next iteration. And then next up, we have another great football boot, another great leather boot to be specific, and that's gonna be the Copa Gloro from Adidas. So Adidas, for the most part, released this boot to compete with other leather football boots around the $100 price point, specifically the Nike Premier 3, in my opinion. And when you compare the two boots, they actually have a lot of similarities with each other. Um, obviously, they're both going to uh, ship with fold-over tongues. And then the Copa Gloro is even going to have this elasticated band, which is a really nice touch. Um, kind of reminds you of those boots from like the early 2000s, like the Predators from like 2005 to 2010. Um, but the Copa Gloro is a great boot. Um, retails for $100. It looks like currently you can sometimes find it for less. Um, one thing I think that could be improved, similar to the New Balances, I think we could get some new colorway variations with the Copa Goro. Most of the colorways you can find from Adidas are pretty basic. I think they have it in black and blue. Thankfully, I was able to find this in this white and like electric green colorway. I really love this um, this colorway for the uh, for the Copa Goro. They kind of remind me of the boots that Tony Cruz wears. If you're familiar with his uh, his ad appears. Um, but this is a great line from Adidas. They don't have a lot of great affordable boots, you know, at that $100 price point or below. Um, and I think it's important that companies prioritize, you know, making quality boots around that price point. Um, and the Copa Gloro is, it's a good alternative to the Copa Mundial as well, which is a slightly more traditional leather football boot. I think the Gloro is a little bit more modern. I really like that aspect, and I'm hoping that we get to see a new design refresh sometime by the end of the year, because I'm really excited to see what Adidas would do um, with a refresh, because I was really impressed with this iteration of the Copa Gloro. And then finally, the last boot on our list here that I'm really excited to see get refreshed, hopefully by the end of the year, it's going to be the Adidas X Crazy Fast, more specifically the Adidas X series. So we've gone through quite a few different naming iterations over the past few years with Adidas. We had the X Speed Flow, followed by the X Speed Portal, and then finally the X Crazy Fast. Um, and to give you context with how well I think each of those models performed, I was a big fan of the X Speed Flow. I think that was honestly one of the best boots of maybe the last five years. It was really, really impressive. I think it definitely kept Adidas really relevant in the speed boot game. Uh, the X Speed Portal that followed that I think was a bit of a step back. It was a little bit more rigid, not quite as soft as the Speed Flow. But then they kind of bounced back from that last year with the release of the X Crazy Fast. Um, this is a great boot. Uh, I tried on the X Crazy Fast um, Point One, which is the laced variation last year. I was a big fan of it. It's super lightweight on feet. I think it's the uh, lightest football boot you can currently get on the market. It's got a razor thin upper, crazy comfortable. Um, I think there could be a little bit more width across the top of the toe box. I think one issue some Adidas boots have is that they tend to taper pretty aggressively. If you look at the top of the sole plate here, I think sometimes it comes too quickly to a point and can sometimes crush the edge of your toes. Um, but other than that, I was still able to play you know, 
over an hour with them with not like pretty much no break in time required at all i have no pressure points in the heel area um it's a really competitive speed boot with the vapor 15 from nike and i'm a little bit on the fence about how good a refresh model is going to be because um with the x series sometimes adidas goes back and forth in terms of quality because i thought that the um x speed portal was kind of a dip in terms of the materials used, the build quality, I just didn't think it was a great model. So hopefully Adidas actually makes some improvements with this one. Um, I don't think they need to do a lot, maybe just a few refreshes here and there, because this is already a really solid football boot. I think they just need to make maybe a few aesthetic, aesthetic changes and widen the toe box, and they're gonna have an amazing boot on their hands. And that is gonna do it for this video. Feel free to let me know in the comments below what football boots you're really excited to see in 2024. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.